The collapse of the national electricity grid is now a common occurrence in Nigeria as homes and businesses were again left without power for several hours on Sunday night. The country witnessed its sixth power grid collapse of 2024 as electricity generation collapsed from 2,583 megawatts at 2 a.m. on Monday to 64.7 around 3 a.m. before the grid was restored later in the day. Although the Transmission Company of Nigeria attributed the cause of the grid collapse to a fire incident, constant gas shortage for power generation companies and vandalism of power infrastructure are responsible for recurrent cases of grid collapse in the country. Paul, yes, we know that power supply is erratic in our country, and these uh, issues seem to be the, let's say, the drivers. Uh, gas shortage, <laughs> now we've had incident of fire at uh, AFAM's uh, power plant. Now, what do you make of this recurring situation? Honestly, it, it's very bothersome. It's bothersome because this is the sixth time it will be happening. Mm. You know, we just talked about inflation now. We, just, we all just acknowledge that the efforts of uh, the CBN are actually paying off. And everything Biko said about prices gradually coming down, that is true. But in the long run, you need some of all these things to work. Now, we've been hearing of vandalism. Mm. It's not a new thing. It's always the reason. It's always the reason. You know, gas shortage, it's always the reason. Although we are doing so much of gas flaring in the country, and yet we still talk about gas shortage. Mm. So for me, I think we just keep uh, dancing around the problem, and there has not been any uh, holistic um, solution. solution. Mm. For example, who is guarding the facility? Who are the people to prevent the vendors from operating? Why are they not? Who is holding them responsible for it? Why is it that as every time we talk about vandalism, for, for, this is uh, uh, April, right? Right. This April, mm -hmm. and it's already happened six, six, <laughs> for the sixth time. I don't, we, we still have many months ahead of us before the end of the year. How many more times will the grid collapse? So for me, I don't like all of these excuses. We say we are not even generating power enough. The other time, I think it was on this program or another program. No, not this program, mm -hmm. on, on that, uh, uh, that TV station I was. I heard the Minister of Power you know, talk about plans and everything, including plans for alternative uh, uh, energy source. And, 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 you understand? Including plans to improve our generation. Mm. Although he, he couldn't talk much about distribution, because even if you generate and transmit and all of that. However, the truth of the matter is we are not even satisfied. We have never, we have not gotten power right in so many years. And now we are getting to 64.7. <laughs> it's very bad. I, I, I think we need to get more serious with the way we handle the power situation because it's actually a major driver for the economy. Okay. In every, from any context you look at it. And if we cannot get power right, you will discover that the efforts the effort of CBN government, the president, and other efforts will be, complete, will be completely undermined because you can't make any meaningful progress without powers, without the, I mean, a varied power sector. A varied power sector. Right. And that's the truth. Mm. BKO, power supply, like we've rightly discussed over time, is an issue for Nigeria. And it seems to me that the government is trying to get things right. But in your perspective, what do you think the government needs to do to checkmate these activities that are, you know, affecting or hampering the steady supply of power? You see, the, the way to approach this is to look at the, look at the entire power sector. On Sunday, we are discussing here because everyone seems to think, oh, the discourse are the problem. Ah, the discourse are the problem. I am not saying the discourse are not a big problem. Right. But the point that I'm making, that some fixated Nigerians um, don't appear to want to hear, is that the entire power sector is rocked by multi crisis, crisis of different dimensions. 
affecting transition and transmission, distribution. generation, and distribution. And distribution. Mm. The way to solve the problem is not simply to look at one sector or one subsector and right. say, ah, this is, is the discourse. In fact, it's an illiterate way of looking at the problem. You understand? Mm. Just as some people, because they have lights in their area, they say, ah, electricity has improved. <laughs> and I've said the way to know whether electricity has improved is to find out how much we are generating, look at how much the transition, uh, transmission company of Nigeria wields to the discourse right. relative to what's uh, generated, mm -hmm. and then the discourse, how much mm -hmm. have they evacuated? That's the way to know. You cannot say power uh, situation has improved because in your area you have light. It's an illiterate way of looking at the problem. And we will not solve a problem if we don't look at it, Holistic. look at the bigger picture. Right. Like what happened now, these system failures that we are talking about, is it a problem of the discourse? Will you say the discourse caused it? Mm -hmm. This year alone, mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've now had more than one system failure in a month. That's what it means. If you have six in four months, we are not even <laughs> at the end of four months. How many are we going to have before the end of, of the year? If we had less than 50 system failures in three years, and in four months we already had four, does it not show clearly that we are not in a good place? Mm. Even with, with people, you put some people who are not even receiving electricity in excess of 10 hours a day, you put them in band A. Mm. Are you whining me? <laughs> they don't get more than 8 to 11 hours a day. And you put them on band A. <laughs> who does that now? So we have problems. If, if electricity supply can drop to <laughs> less than 100 megawatts in a day. Mm. It's marks of something else. Yeah. Gas supply, we always say gas constraint is a problem. Mm -hmm. People breaking pipelines. Mm -hmm. Electricity, I mean, Genco's located so far away from source of gas. It's a problem. But you know, in our country, if we located the uh, gen I mean, generating companies right. in the same area, because the source of gas is in the Niger Delta, mm -hmm. people will raise hell about it. They will complain. Mm. You complain. Mm -hmm. But it has its own problems. Pipelines crisscrossing our country and a lot of them on the surface of the earth. Yeah. People, they, I've seen pipelines where children were running on top of them. In the Niger Delta, I saw videos. Mm -hmm. They're just playing around. They don't even know. <laughs> Oblivious of the danger. Yeah. They're just those people breaking pipelines, believing that it's crude oil that is there, only to discover that it's gas. Yes. You merely wasted yeah. because you cannot pipe it. What you've broken, you've broken it for nothing. There's no way you can trap the gas that is escaping. These boys doing all this, they need to be spoken to or, 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 or find a way to deal uh, with the situation. They can't be breaking pipelines like that because you don't, well, after breaking it, you cannot, you can't um, uh, evacuate the gas. You can't do anything to it. But Paul you, just, just, you just waste it. Yeah, but Paul just you know, gave an instance that perhaps needs to police these areas, these infrastructures better if we're talking about you know, safety of these uh, gas pipelines. You made a mistake from the beginning. If you bury it so deep in the ground, mm. bury it so deep in the ground, and you make it... You make it risky for anyone to attempt to get there. Either um, uh, you could electrocution, right. upon and all that. Mm -hmm. They will not go there. The way the way we put the gas on the on the surface of the earth in some places, I mean gas pipelines, and the way we didn't bury some of them deep enough is an incentive. It encourages the, the boys. Yes, the, those vandals. That's the thing we should have. If we are to take a look at the, the pipeline infrastructure again. We have the resources. We need to rebury them, 
bury them deep in the ground. They won't get there. That's the thing. Other countries do that. But where are we going to find the kind of money to do that now? Mm. Because the same way that they are breaching even petroleum uh, pipelines. I remember the former minister of uh, petroleum, uh, minister of state, petroleum resource, Ibe Kachiku, telling us that they wanted to send um, refined crude to some of the depots. They then decided that, okay, let us even first pump water through the pipelines. Do you know that on the day that it was announced that they will pump uh, petrol, pipelines were breached in so many places, meaning that some people within NNPC, DPR, and the rest, they had already notified their boys that, oh, we are pumping petrol. Mm. Oh, yeah, go and breach the pipelines. They didn't know that it was water that they would encounter. The test? Mm. They broke the pipelines in different places only to describe that oh, it was actually water that was pumped. Mm. <laughs> yes, I was shocked when the minister was telling us that's what we do to ourselves in this country. We sabotage our country. We do great things to undermine our country. Not just with our mouths and, uh, and, and what we type on social media, but yeah. even some of the things that we do. We behave like enemies of our country. And it has to stop. Right, indeed it has to stop if we need to be progressive in this country we call Nigeria.